I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we've got another new tank build coming your way. So what's unique about this video, number one is coming from Sanjay Yoshi, who's Reefkeeping's resident lighting guru who hasn't set up a new tank build probably in about a decade. So number one, that's cool. Number two, he's using the Triton method. Um, I don't know about you guys, but for me, uh, I've been seeing Triton everywhere nowadays. Um, so it's pretty cool to kind of see it in action. Um, if, if you remember uh, with Mike Paletta's ELO system, he also used the Triton method. And what I said during the initial video there is I wanted to kind of show yearly progression of the systems through videos. And, um, you know, you'll notice on this particular video, it's probably maybe 10 months to a year old as well. Um, because, again, I've got basically yearly updates coming up. Um, so... Keep your eyes out open for, uh, again, those two updates. Again, one from the, the Paletto Elos tank, and then again, it will be this tank that you're about to see today. Um, you know, just as a side note, you've heard me say many times to, uh, again, give my, give my sponsors a chance to earn your business, right? Because, again, I believe them to be good, honest guys. And I had something happen to me this week that just kind of highlighted that point. Um, again, the sponsors are Premium Aquatics, Tunzi, Bulk Reef Supply, Ecosystems. And uh, this particular case, it was with Premium Aquatics. So with Premium Aquatics, what I did is I placed my order for some basically calcium uh, media for my calcium reactor. And I pull, you know, put my hand in the box and open it up and I get this terry cloth towel, right? And now with this towel, it's like the perfect size and it's just one of those things that, you know, as reef keepers, we all can use. I didn't order it, right? And, uh, and I thought, wow, that was useful. Now, I mean, there are two sides to this coin. Um, there's marketing from their side of it, so now I can always remember that Premium, Aqu Premium Aquatics were the good guys that gave me this terry cloth towel, and I thought, hey, that was cool, but also it's very useful, and I'll use it a lot. The other thing that pulled out of this box, right, were basically two sponges, and I thought, wow, how apropos, because uh, basically one or two videos ago, I showed how you can take this magic eraser and basically slice it down to get maybe six-ish uses out of it when you're using it with your magnets. And, uh, and again, so it's one of those things where you don't even have to buy it, right? Premium Aquatics basically just supplied this in the box. And then we'll call it the traditional kind of algae scraper that's a little more coarse. But I usually use these on kind of the reactors, that sort of thing. And again, you know, from, from their perspective, you know, Premium Aquatics is kind of in bold here. So it keeps Premium Aquatics at the top of your mind. Um, and it probably didn't, you know, cost them much, but it didn't cost me anything. And these are two things that are very useful that I'll use. So again, I just wanted to share that fact. Again, good, honest guys that they deserve a chance to earn that business. Uh, and again, if you're looking for American Reefs HPD, which I consider one of the best fish foods on the planet, go over to AmericanReefHPD.com. Every week I get tons of emails, uh, not only saying, hey, that's a, the best food, uh, but where do I order it from? And so that's why every time I kind of add this to the videos. So you can either get it from AmericanReef.com, just click the store link up at the top left-hand corner, um, or just go to AmericanReefHPD.com. Now let's check out Sanjay's new tank build. Okay, what are we talking today, guys? Today we're talking about patience. <laughs> this is the ultimate tag for someone with patience. 
and I helped Sanjay move this tank in, and it was poor planning on our part, and then we thought the two of us could physically lift this and bring it into the house, but it weighs as much as my car, so he got it in, he found some good friends of his that helped him move it in, and now over the past four months, he has basically gotten to the point where in another month or so, he's actually going to put more fish and corals into it. So it's the ultimate tank for a patient aquarist, which we always talk about. Nothing good ever happens fast in a reef tank. Only bad stuff happens fast. This is the tank to show you good things happen when you do it slow and take your time. So it's, it's easy to be patient when it's your fourth tank. That's what I'm going <laughs> to yeah. Not when it's your first tank. Right. You're your first always tank, you eager to get it going. Yeah. Right. But when this is your fourth tank, like, you know, oh, you're okay. okay. Yeah. Well, that, and it's summer, right? So you got your everything in play. Yeah, with all my travel and yes. everything, which works out perfect because I really didn't want to put stuff in here that was that could potentially die if there was things wrong, went wrong, right. and then leave. Right. So I'm basically taking it really slow with it. And is that your grand vision of it? In other words, like a monospecific? Or what's yeah, this is going to be a Montipara only tank. I've never tried that before. Mm -hmm. There's enough species of Montipara that you can populate this tank with. And that's my plan, is to basically just make it a Montipara tank. And I'm hoping and get away with putting butterfly fish in there. <laughs> so, so it's going to be really it's... different from any tank we've seen. So if it's butterflies and Montipara, because he's not talking about nothing but caps. Even right. though on the right hand side now is a whole mountain right. of caps, right. eventually be spiraling up and doing a lot of things. He plans on adding a lot of the newer, more colorful ones, mm -hmm. some of the slow growers, some of the fast growers, and none of the acroporas that are going to overgrow it. But some of the Montipras may overgrow it. So. Yeah, they will overgrow eventually. Right. <laughs> and this is also, a, as our tanks go, a very simplistically done tank. When I say that there's radiant lights, there's the uh, Ecotech pumps, there's a Vector pump in the bottom, and there's a skimmer. That's basically it. He's going to eventually add a two or three part doser, and that's going to be it for the tank. Right. So in terms of simplicity, I mean, we always get tangled up in all the nuances of adding stuff and having every piece of equipment you possibly can. This is going to be a very simplistic and a very patient tank. So right. this is going to show if the proof's in the pudding. Not rushing and taking your time, not adding a ton of equipment, if you can have as gorgeous a tank as he has in the rest of the house. Okay, so let's step it back. You got the tank and you guys figure you can lift it up? Like right. So we actually loaded it in Mike's car. <laughs> we drove it here, which was easy to load there because okay. there was a forklift truck. Sure, sure. So they just, yeah. so yeah, they just put it in. We it was until... <laughs> when yeah. we got here, we were like, Mike, we got to take it to my basement. Right. And the moment we started doing that, it's like, <gasps> we are too old for this. Yeah. yeah. And we started <laughs> laughing and yeah, realizing... Things are breaking, right? We, we weren't as smart as we thought either. <laughs> we, we thought we could carry this around the front, around the back, into the uh, house. So right, we right. just split it out of this truck and put it into my garage. <laughs> God. Where it sat there for a few weeks until I could find some way of getting it down here and now was that hands basically or? no i actually got a cart from work okay okay and uh with a little hand put, cart yeah put one yeah. down with a hand cart down. you know we brought it in okay. and so that wasn't that much carrying left to do so as because um, remember on your big tank you had said you had this, like a bubble kind of yeah we we used a basically air air mattress to <laughs> yeah. lift it up <laughs> But what's also nice is he also learned from the past. He already had the French door, so he didn't have to knock the wall. Yeah, right. right. So that made it a so lot that made easier. It a lot easier. When you don't have the door space, rule number one, right. measure the size of the tank versus your doors. Because mm -hmm. if the tank is bigger than the doors, guess what, kids? It's not going to get into your house. Right. And we've all made that mistake of right. the millimeter space in between. So give yourself enough room. Because if you're moving stuff and you have someone that also has to squeeze by the door to get in, right. they can't get through that space. So right, yep, right. they can account all those things. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now, originally you had a soft coral tank. I thought this was going to replace. But yeah, that soft coral tank was in my office. Mm -hmm. It had been there for ever since we moved into this house. Mm -hmm. I moved it from my old house. Mm -hmm. So that tank was already hitting 22 years. I've been in this house for that long. And uh, after 22 years, I figured it was time to retire that tank. <laughs> uh, so I got the opportunity to get this opportunity to get this tank, and then I basically said, you know what, I'll put it downstairs in the basement. That way, it's a little more accessible for water and water changes, right, right, right. which were starting to become a chore upstairs when you have to carry buckets of water up there. <laughs> so here, I can still run a hose. Mm -hmm. I can run a hose from my water change system up to here and I can drain 
directly to the drain. So now is that the plan in other words to tie this into the system you got for your bigger tank? It's not tied in. The water is different. Right, but no, I meant the water change system. Yeah, because I can just run a longer hose and okay. reach here. So yeah, because that's, that's an easy way to do it. We showed that in one of the earlier yeah, videos. Yeah, I can, we can, I can show it to you yeah, again. Yeah, we'll go do that one. Right. So you, are, so you will, again, you're not going to be schlepping buckets. No, 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 there's no schlepping of right. buckets right. anymore. <laughs> Too yeah. old for that stuff. <laughs> okay, well, what about the drain side of it? The drain? Yeah, in other yeah, words. Yeah, I can run a hose from here to the drain. So you're, so you're doing both. That same hose will run to the drain. Okay, so right. you're just going to do it that way. Got yeah. it. Got it. Yeah, it's a simple way. I mean, yeah. doing water changes, make it as simple as you can, because as we found, if it's not simple, you don't want to do you the water do changes. It. And, and uh, very so that's like I said, I'm, I'm yeah. probably going to experiment with the Triton method down here. And if it's as good as it claims, then I may never have to do a water change. Right. And to that point, how about you guys review a little bit what the Triton system is so people kind of get it at least. It's basically a system that was developed in, in Germany where you start off with very pure water, you add their trace elements and their major elements dose them regularly, and the tank stays stable enough that you don't have to do water changes. But you also send in for uh, more meticulous testing, so it'll see what's out of balance and what's in balance, and then you correct accordingly. If you're low in manganese, you add manganese. If you're low in zinc, so it's looking at the minor trace elements, or the trace elements mm -hmm. to an even greater extent than what we're looking at now, and you adjust accordingly. Rather than with water changes, we take out a lot, we put in a lot, Scatter shot, right? Yeah, it's it's sort of nuclear warfare on the <laughs> tank versus that is more fine tuning of the tank. So the tanks that we've seen with Triton have been very impressive, but most of those have been European tanks. That it's the system's only been in the U.S. for approximately two years now, mm -hmm. so we haven't really seen a whole lot of tanks running this long term. So the question is, is this the, uh, another methodology to do it? A simpler methodology. The, the, the bait's still on of whether it is simpler or not because it does require more testing and more tinkering and fine tuning. So sure. that'll be the question. And now with that, yeah, I mean, I, the goal is just to play with it. Sure. I mean, sure. essentially, with every tank I set up, I'm always trying to learn new right. things right. and try out new things. And this would be a good opportunity to say, okay, let me try it right. out, see if it works. I can always give feedback on whether it works well or not. And I know I can keep a tank successful without it. Right, <laughs> right. So I kind of want to see what the benefits are of sure, doing it this way. Sure. And now, um, as far as sending that water, is there like a monthly fee kind of thing, or is that all included, or how does that work? Uh, it costs roughly 30 to $40 to send a test in. Once you do the first one, I'm doing it like every quarter. Mm -hmm. Once you have it stabilized, it should be fairly constant that I mean that's the goal and that's the whole point of it mm -hmm. that it's constant so you don't have to do testing every week mm -hmm. but I still test things like alkalinity calcium magnesium myself with my own test kits then I also compare with how they are with the triton got it. Got it. so I'm doing sort of double but I do alkalinity tests every day on every tank I have because that's the thing I find if that fluctuates a lot that's where you have the biggest problems well it's funny because the dichotomy of you two right in other words yeah. You're always <laughs> testing something, right? And then you're always not testing something. I try to test as little as possible. Right. But I'm, I'm more of a tinkerer than Sanjay. Right. Sanjay right. puts it in, they grow, they're fine, everything's stable. Me, I'm always moving something, right. testing something, trying something. So right. that, that, that is also the dichotomy between us, is that I'm a, more of a tinkerer. Right, right. Sanjay tinkers on the tank, I tinker within the tank. Right, right. And then some, right? Yeah. Yeah, I put my corals in and... Right. I'm done. <laughs> right. You know, they grow or they don't grow. Right. No, okay. So, I, same philosophy here. In other words, it's going to be Triton, but what, if, what happens if none of them, Montiparas, you know, or Digital, what if they don't grow? You're just going to be like... Well, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't grow. Right, right. I, mean, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't grow. Right. It's just a matter of, you know, how... How easy fast the, they grow. How, how, how fast, how colorful... Uh, how easy the system is to work with, uh, mm -hmm. see if that water change claim is true. Mm -hmm. Because of the other factors um, you're doing on this tank, you're basically keeping everything the same that you are in the other tank. You're using the radio much, lights with the lighting. same template, yeah. you're using the, the Ecotech pumps, you're running the same amount of water yeah, through it. The system is pretty much very similar in terms mm -hmm. of equipment to what I have on my other tanks. Well, let's yeah. go over that for a little bit. Okay, lighting on this one, you said using the same 
Are these it's Gen a, Gen? These are still Gen twos. Okay, Gen twos. Yep, these yeah. are the same ones that I have on my big tank. And then, are you using the EcoTech pre-programmed template or? No, I have my own little okay. template. I. Oh, you're not using the maximum growth template like you are in the other mm -hmm. tank. No, even that one, I'm not oh, using. Oh, you changed it now. My templates are always different from what yeah. they have. Uh, okay. I mean, I, like I said, my lights are set up in such a way that they run all on when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. And then usually in the evenings, I actually dim the blues. Okay. <laughs> Get the blues <laughs> out of there. That's, that's a lot of dichotomy. Well, hates the color like, blue light. Yeah. I kind of like my tank to have more whiter look. Right, right. Uh, As opposed more to natural prefers look. more blue yeah. at night and less white at night. So <laughs> there is a complete difference right. between the two. So like I said, I'm one of those people who dims the blues. Right, right. The only oh. person I know that dims the blues <laughs> in the back. So... So but obviously you see how it, yeah, gonna, look at his other tank and you see how fast the growth is. Right. It, it works. So it's an interesting difference between us. And now when you say you blast the lights when you're not here all day, like eight hours full tilt or what's... It's I think about six hours, seven six hours full tilt. Okay. Yeah. And, and then the same here that? right now? Huh? Sit same here, six, seven yeah. hours full this tilt? This one, because there's not enough coral in, in here right now, mm -hmm. I actually have it running at 65%. Okay. I wanted to keep the algae down in the beginning, right. so I wasn't going to blast it with light right from the right. beginning. Right. So it's actually lower light. Well, also the and this tank is much smaller than my other tank. The lights are closer, so I can actually run this at a lower right. light output. No, and also since you're running Montiparas, they have a potential to bleach a lot easier under these yeah. lights. So we'll see. So what you're going to start slower and. Right now they're at 65. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, because that's that's one of the things a lot of people forget with these LEDs. Mm -hmm. They are actually really bright. The room doesn't look as bright because all the light is focused down, so you really have to acclimate with these. Because I've bleached out a lot of things early on when I didn't do the acclimation. I mean, I, I haven't had too many bleaching problems right. with it, so I don't know what the what the factor is that causes the bleaching. Right. Um, I've taken corals in my big tank, as you'll see, and I put them right under the lights, and I've never had any bleaching. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I, I think there's some other factors that come into play. Yeah. The nutrients in the water. There's a whole bunch of other sure. things that have an impact on the bleaching. But you don't test, so you don't know what your nutrient <laughs> levels are in your water. I, lately, I tested just to see what they were. Right, yeah. right. And I was actually surprised at what they were. You, you, you found, yeah, you actually found a pretty high phosphate level. Well, pretty high phosphate, pretty high nitrates. <laughs> Well, I, we'll talk about those when we get on. Right, <laughs> right now there's zero nitrate, zero <laughs> yeah. phosphorus. Well, this like there's only th only things live in here. Are these few corals that I added in here. Right. And there's a bunch of snails and few crabs and serpent stars and sea cucumbers in here. So well, that's just it. You you guys were talking a little bit before we start taping as far as um, when you added them, etc. Why don't you kind of go through that step? In other words, you got you finally got the tank down here. Right, we got it down here. I got it down here. This was towards the end of April. My whole goal was to get it, get water in it. Right. Before I left for a month, <laughs> I was going to be in China for a month. Mm -hmm. So, I set it up, got the Caribbean sand. Mm -hmm. Uh, this time I went to the coarser sand. Yeah, not the oolite. I always use, use yeah, the oolite yeah, in the yeah. past. Right. But the oolite moves around a lot. Yes. And so at this time I went with their coarser version, and I think I'm happier with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I set up the sand, water, and no skim or nothing, just let it circulate, and let's, lights were off. And when you and put the sand in, did you do any funny things like rinse it or anything like that or you just no, I never in, rinse right? the sand right exactly I put the sand in and then I put the water so it doesn't get stirred up right and left it like that with the lights off mm -hmm. uh, I didn't even have the circulation pump running I just let these pumps run in here and it ran like that for a month mm -hmm. so just basically letting the bacteria develop and everything else right uh, came back in June and then put the rock in I uh, did a little bit of aquascaping. Uh, did the same thing that I did with my previous tanks. Essentially, rocks are on up a desk still with a rod, and I skewer them and put them on here. Yep, yep. Like she's kebabs. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, luckily, Mike has shown it like th three or four times, and he goes, Sanjay taught me this method. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, I give you credit, Sanjay. Yeah. I learned it from somebody else. Yeah, you know, I'm not that's how most of us have learned everything in this hobby. We've learned it from somebody else. Right. That's, why we do the video. that's why we do the videos. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah. So that sat there since June. I let it put the rock in. I let it run again for a while without the lights being on. And somewhere in the middle of June, I turned the lights on. And as usual, you know, you start to see algae in there. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So a couple of weeks, the algae was growing, but it started to disappear. It was like this brown film algae and nothing else came on. And in the meantime, I was looking to get the detritus eating crew and some snails to mm -hmm. chow down on the algae. Right. And if you look carefully, you can see the tracks of the snails <laughs> on, on the, the back. back. Yes. Yeah. And you can see that they yes. actually do eat the algae. Right. Um, and that's really the only wall in this tank that has any algae. Yeah, because these, these front ones I scrape with a magnet. Sure. So that does, okay. And that's what it looks like right now. So I put some corals in. These, these corals have been here only for maybe about two weeks. Uh, I was going to say, it's funny, timing-wise, when did you set, isn't that Elos roughly the same time frame as when Sanjay set this up? Uh, about two April, weeks, May? three weeks, yeah, earlier, that's all. So it'll be interesting because, again, they're both brand new tanks being set up. Now, yours is not going to be mono-specific, per se, right? No. I right. keep playing with different things, different corals going right. in, and I'll... Right. And I also have a lot of fish in the tank already. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no fish in here. Right. <laughs> I'm taking my sweet time with this tank. Well, for me, that yeah. was taking my time, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I didn't, you know, throw in a, quite a school of antheas, but this is close. Okay, so we are sitting here, we're beginning, we'll say mid of July, right? Right. And then uh, you said you're, you're already going to be going somewhere else. So yeah, I'm going somewhere else for two weeks, so there's no right. point putting fish in here at right. this point. So I'll start thinking in about adding fish and more corals in here. Uh, in August. And you're primarily going to add butterfly fish, so you're not going to worry really about them jumping out like we I do with the wrasses? I, I hope they don't jump. I mean, you never know with fish. Yeah. I mean, any, build, any fish can jump. You can, can build jump. a little screen on top. Yeah, that's the problem with these tanks. It takes away from the look when you start adding all of those things. Although, you know what? Did you um, see the one that Mike put on, it, on the Elos? No. Okay, so it's a white band that adds a little white cap, so it actually brings out the stand. It really looks Awesome. Well, so. Who made that? I did. You yeah. did? Oh, okay. Yeah. So now you, you can recruit them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only thing we would have to do is loop Yeah, them see, that's this. the other thing. You know, the way they design these things, it, it leaves a lot to be desired. Or still. you can just hang the lights from the roof. You know. your wife yeah, loves you're going to hang them. The I don't like that. No. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to go around these things. And if you go around them, with the, then you can't move the lights later on if mm. you had to move them. Yeah. Now, with, with this kind of stand, with this kind of hood, you actually can. Yeah. Yeah, all you do is the corners. You put a couple corners in here. It actually works pretty well. I've got one for another look. guy. It's. I love to take a look. Yeah. yeah it, I mean, it was. Because so I mean, right now I just put the lights on here. Right now. Right. Yeah. But is that how I want them eventually well, later on? When you're on, first, the butterfly jumps Am I going out. to move out? Yeah. Yeah. Right. When you first, the first clevis jumps, jumps out, out. you begin. I might yeah. I need the hood <laughs> I tonight. Get crack and hear yeah. the measurements. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think people making these tanks, they should come up with a hood that goes along with right. it. Right. Yeah. You know, they really should. Yeah. I, agree. I know they look nice, but functionally there are issues that are fish jumping out. <laughs> and so we're talking August time frame is when you're hoping to have some in your straight straight butterfly. Straight butterfly. Or butterfly or angels? We put it in butterflies butterfly. and angels. There yeah. might be angels in there. Okay. Like the butterflies. Okay. And yeah. you're just again. There's no. Test I may have to put area. a tang or two just to keep some algae down. Okay, but you're just mark. right. Got it. it. It won't have that many fish. I'm hoping. So to find that, because when <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike says, oh, yeah, yeah, this is not going to be hardly stocked. It's like 50 fish. No, nah, right? in my 90, ah. there's only 10 fish right now. Uh. Yeah, so I can see 10 <laughs> fish in okay. there easily. Uh. And um, just in general, now, I, so yours is opposite, I'll call opposite, meaning you're going to, you ha you're going to have mixed Right, it's going to be basically a mixed reef, right? Right. And a lot of fish, but you're both still using the Triton system. Yeah, so we'll also right. be able to see from that. Well, okay, so skimmer-wise, what do you got skimming on this one, and what do you have skimming on yours? This one here, it's one of the, I think it's a vertex skimmer. I don't really remember now. Uh, I think it's a vertex skimmer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. It, they don't put their label on here, so it's hard to remember. Right, uh, it looks like an older vertex. I think it's an older vertex. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm running a Deltec, but I've run two other different skimmers on it, so I haven't found one that, that you're really that I'm in love with. So, okay. yeah. Now, so I was going to ask, is it oversized like this one? I mean, like, like that looks like a pretty good substantial skimmer. It, it, mine's slightly smaller. Okay. But I also have a algae mm. bed, which is they also recommend with Triton, where I have a chamber of uh, Cato. And yeah, that's what they recommend. Lerma. They recommend putting you know, some algae yeah, bed. The first chamber is Cato, mm -hmm. and the first uh, second chamber is 
Calerpa, so. So I've got to figure out how well that's going to play out here yet. Uh, so you are planning on adding that algebra? Possibly. Yeah, because that's, that's one of the things that Triton highly recommends. <laughs> yeah. your fault I mean, system. you know, I, mean, I, I want to give the system a chance to succeed. So <laughs> I don't want to cut any corners. If that's what they recommend, that's what I want to follow. Right, right. Right, And that way they cannot say, oh, you didn't do this, and that's why it sure. doesn't work. Sure, sure. I'm doing exactly. what you recommend. Right. All the I'm going to give it a fair shot at working. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Because right. then, if it doesn't, we can always go back to our old system. So it's not right, right. And like right. I said, I, I don't see it not working. Right. You know, yeah. conceptually, there's nothing wrong with that approach. Sure. Right. Sure. I mean, a, you know, the idea basically is that trace elements get consumed over time. Your water deviates from natural salt water. And the way they're adding the chemicals in is to bring it back in line with the natural salt mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, conceptually, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. Right. Yeah, the other difference uh, between our tanks is he runs substrate, I do not. True. So, true. that could be very interesting because the one problem I've seen to date is I acquire or accumulate detritus versus this potentially could get consumed in the sand. I don't remove detritus ever. Ever. And I remove it weekly. And, uh, I have my big tank and I don't, I have so you never, never removed it. You don't muck with the sand as far as the, no. the what is the hydro vac, I think is the official. No, I don't for? muck with any of that right. stuff. Whatever I just it set is. it up and I let it go. And, uh, yeah. and I don't use deep sand beds, as you can see. It's not very deep. Yeah, well, right. that's you probably know, half an inch, three quarters. A little more. It depends where you're looking. You know, there are parts of it where it's more than an inch, and parts of it it's half an inch. Right. And some of it is going to get blown away with the pumps if I increase the speed. Sure. And then I'll just put some coarser gravel there mm -hmm. you know, and deal with it. And then for yours, Mike, you're saying, again, yeah, you have that starboard on the on that one. Right, and you're still accumulating though? Yes. Right? Right. Well, one, because I tend to have a lot of fish, so I feed them right. a lot, so there's a lot of waste and a lot of detritus. Right. And two, just over time, you start to accumulate detritus. Right. It's just any tank right. I've worked with. He, he let, doesn't mind I'm right. it. Mind it. Right, right, right. <laughs> again, I mean, he grows his corals phenomenally well. I'm not right. detracting from that, but he also has 0.8 of phosphate and high nitrates right, right now. 0. 0.8? That's what you said. Uh, no, that's good. We're, we're, we're doing that one out. Like when we get over there, we can talk about the, the <laughs> higher nitrate. Right? Okay, so then for here, you'll be adding the algae bed, right? Yeah, I might add a little algae reactor, one of those added yeah, reactors. Well, yes. yeah. I already have one in my okay. big tank, which I was playing around with. Mm -hmm. It's too undersized for the big tank. Okay, so it might be and good for this. It might be good for this, or I might get a smaller one, because part of the problem is fitting everything in here. There's not enough space. Yeah. Sure. You know, and yeah, that's, like that's, room, that, room. you know. That's the problem with the. So things have to fit underneath the shelves here, and there's not going to be enough space for right. yeah. things. Well, see, yeah. that's why I, went, I built my own bigger sump for mine to be able to hold the algae filter because the sump that they gave me was too small to hold everything. And I try to keep everything self contained so that if water becomes an issue, it stays in the sump rather than on the floor. <laughs> right. I, like I said, I wanted to give all these systems a ch and chance to use them the way they're designed first. Right. Figure out what I find problems with, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe then I can give feedback to people and say, you know, if I were to do it, this is how I, what I would change in this sure, system. Sure, sure. Well, what size uh, sump is that approximately? Do you know? I don't know, whatever came with it. So I have really, I, roughly it's about 27 inches long and 14, like 15 inches. Gallons. It might be 20, 30 gallons. 20, 30 gallons, there you go. The but whole system is 350 liters. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. And the tank is roughly 75 gallons. Right. Maybe another 20 in the sump. So the whole system is about 90 gallons. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. And now I noticed the one thing that you do, Mike, that you don't do is like on the skimmer, you have it propped up, right on the sta on the stand. For yeah, I propped it up because the water level was getting too high, and then I was not able to con too much skim air was coming out. Got. It. And even if I opened it up fully. Mm -hmm. I was still getting too much skimmit coming right. out, so I had to prop it up a little bit. Yeah, see, I have my water level lower, so that if the power shuts off, it drains right, right to the don't. top, so I don't have water on the kitchen floor. Yeah, this doesn't drain. I mean, they have a good system here, so there's not much increase really? in the water level. So it's got some sort of back valve, gate valve, some kind of valve that... I mean, it's got valves in here, so mm -hmm. you can actually tweak the overflow, so it doesn't make much noise. It's mm -hmm. pretty quiet. Okay. It's making noise now, but uh, because I was playing around with it last night. Mm-hmm. But you can make it pretty quiet. Okay. And 
water, whatever water you lose is basically whatever water goes down those uh, cutouts. But whenever you don't lose water anymore. goes through here, the siphon's broken soon after? Yeah, siphon breaks with that. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So it's on not return, dropping yeah. a whole lot. Got no, because that's typically the where the weak link is on the is on the siphon is the yeah that's where I mean I have I have that pretty high on purpose yeah and, yeah you don't want to be gone for a month and come home though flood no, no I've done that before yeah I've enough times <laughs> <laughs> enough good when you can enough times when you right. walk in the house yeah yeah moist no, I trust <laughs> yeah exactly you know that's not there's some water in the house again little things that I kind of find. You know, you put a sump in, you, I don't usually use the container. I always like to drain the thing out sure. of there. And there's no place to put a collection cup. Sure. Oh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So That's little things like that. Right. I can put it on the other side, but I don't want to have water near my electricity. Right, right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. These, are little, these are the little things. These are, these are the little <laughs> things that I look for and I go, you know, this is a problem. I, this is how I like to run my system, but I can't with this. Right, right. You know, I have to use that collection cup. Right. Uh, I usually like to have excess come out of there. Right. And now, as far as kind of auto top off? It uh, comes with an auto top off. Okay. So actually, it's got a little container here, mm -hmm. that this one here. Yep. Uh -oh. And you can fill this up with water. Sorry. It's okay. And it's what got a float, it's got a float valve. Mm -hmm. And it'll basically, once that float valve drops, it drips the water out of here. So you're going to put a bigger bucket here while you're gone? For no, a few actually weeks? now I tested it out. So this is again part of my taking it slow. Right. Right. I test out all these systems. Right. So see of see how long how long can I go before I have to top it off? Right. And right now this has been running since last Thursday. So right before I was gone, I topped it off. Mm -hmm. So it lasts Topped about everything a week. off. And I would say, yeah, it would last about a week. So whoever comes in to feed your fish will got to dump yeah. water in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a week is okay. Yeah. And my tank upstairs, my 55, it was like every other day I was having to dump oh. water. <laughs> yeah, my sunlight tank's the same way. I, I go through like three gallons a day of evaporation. Well, I have a fan there now yeah. because it gets hot, so I'm using yeah, evaporative yeah. cooling. And I'm amazed by how fast a six gallon bucket drains. So this is one of the things I like about this, that it has this extra tank that I can right. fill up with about three gallons of water, you know. Right. And between the evaporation and those three gallons, it'll last about a week. Uh, and now do you have any plans to ever to uh, automatically supply water to there or no? I could, I could. I mean, since it's in the basement and I can run hoses. Yeah, all you have to <laughs> run a drain line and just plug it in, turn it on. Yeah, so I can basically do the same put thing. Put a float on it. I can put another pump right on an electronic float and have that turn turn on and off. Uh, yeah, but yeah, if, if if it starts to become a problem, that's what I could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you get older, and you can't carry those buckets anymore. So well, I'm not carrying any buckets. <laughs> I'm only carrying one <laughs> gallon right. containers at a time right. now. Yeah, and, keeping it and the walking going. back, <laughs> walking back and forth with the two gallons of water is good enough exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Good for the heart, right? Yeah. They tell me that any more than any more than two gallons, uh, <laughs> uh, five uh, five now gallons. I got the bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. carrying a six-gallon bucket <laughs> up the steps. Yeah. When I have the stroke, it'll be what am I doing? He's carrying a six-gallon bucket up the steps. That's what it'll be. We found him <laughs> drowned we, in water. We found the dog licking the water off. <laughs> him. We can't tell whether yeah. the salt came from his yeah, you know, yeah. the dog or from the water. Yeah. Yeah, there's poor Lucy. Oh, uh, <laughs> I wish she didn't uh, die of dehydration. Right, 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 right. No, no, salt water will make her dehydrate. No, this is fresh water. Yeah, <laughs> okay. salt water okay. down the strainer <laughs> right there. That's right. Okay, so back to this system then. So you're going to probably uh, add the macroalgae. Uh, the, as far as kind of pump and circulation, you're all happy with kind of the stock system there as far as... Yeah, I mean, I d the, it doesn't come with the pump. Okay, so no pump. The no. stock system does not come with this. This tank does not come with the lights and the pump. Okay, it or comes the, with everything else. Or the power heads. Or the power heads. Okay, right. But Makes it comes sense. with everything. No skimmer. Right. So this is you have to add those extra. So you got to add skimmer, right. pumps, lights. Skimmer, pump, oh. and lights, and Certainly. that's pretty much okay. and the heater. What about that cool little panel, light panel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he added that. Yeah, yeah I added I that. Say, look, I added that. You know, I want to make it easy to turn things on and off. Yes. And, yeah. I want to make it easy so I would remember what switch is connected to what. Uh, so that's kind of what I did. Yeah, you can the, buy these the little 
DJ light strips yep. or switches, yeah. whatever they're called. Yeah, like, so yeah American like DJ like or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like 20 so, bucks, and that's the best money you'll spend. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's convenient. Things plug in in the back and put a label on here. And uh, oh, Although, yeah. You notice he's got labels on his. I have labels mine. on mine. Because I don't know. Well, I haven't seen the one in the sunlit tank. That doesn't have labels, does it? That's because I can't see it because it's <laughs> sunlit. Oh, yeah, okay. oh, that's right. See, but I have them yeah. memorized. Oh, okay. No, see, I, I don't have them memorized. Though, like, I forget. Memorize what's the, each switches. Like, I, put the ones I, I like to off the save my like memory this. for more important <laughs> things <laughs> than remembering what switch is where. There's certain availability there. <laughs> no, it's easy. I, I put the ones I'm actually going to switch off at the far end, so I know those are the ones to switch okay, off. Okay, there you go. It's pretty simple. Because <laughs> you usually don't switch off the heater and stuff like that. So. Okay, so back to here then. So there's the dosing pump. That's similar to the one that you have, right, Mike? Right. The, so for the Triton. Yeah, I have the GHL yeah, that's dosing what I have. pump. Okay. And yeah. you're gonna, that's what you're going to dose with whatever. Yeah, it's got four. Mm -hmm. I guess whatever right, you're gonna, you're gonna dosing heads. Three part, or you're gonna do the Triton three part. I am. This no, Triton is three part. Is it three part? Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure. And what you can they also were. dose magnesium off it as a fourth part. And okay, so there's the question. So when they do their water changes, if you're just dosing, there's no water changes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Water testing. Right. When they, okay, how are you going to replenish all the, you know, other kind of trace elements that aren't up to par? It, it tells you what's low, and then you add them accordingly. They sell they trace elements. Ones. Okay, there we go. So they, so have, they have they have a very pure specific trace. They elements have trace elements say. that okay. you would add yeah. if things were low. Yeah. And if things are actually high, that creates a little interesting problem. Yeah. Because yeah. then right? we think we're getting them out with water changes, so, so we're not doing it. They actually have a salt, which they recommend, uh -huh. that is low in pretty much everything. Right. So that way, when you do a water change with that, it'll bring down the values. Got it. And this is the Tropic Marin, right? The Tropic Marin is the salt they suggest you start with. This, right. But they but have, have the, they have the, have an adjustment salt. An adjustment ah, salt okay. that doesn't have the right. trace elements in it. So you have to bring those high values down. If you change water with stuff that already has those values <laughs> high, right. it's not going to come down. Right. 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 I mean, so, the only value that people have seen a lot of is lithium. For some reason, is high on theirs. And there's actually one other one. But the lithium doesn't seem to be a problem. No. Huh. But okay. uh, probably eight of the ten people I know that have sent in their tests all came back with high lithium. So they may all be manic actually, depressive, so they're taking lithium. <laughs> I think everybody in the U.S., yeah. their <laughs> tanks are high in lithium. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they, they've hypothesized that it's coming out of the PVC pipe or it's coming out of something else we're doing. There's no rhyme or reason yet as to why we all have high lithium levels. It could be in the salt we're using, too. Yeah. Okay. So... It's, it's an interesting thing to look at, but it sure. hasn't been problematic. Sure. I mean, it's not like you had high copper and going, oh, what else should I do? This? Well, then you have major problems. Right, right. Or other yeah. heavy metals. Okay. So then on, on this one here, then, um, I noticed, again, you have the uh, the radion. I don't know what they call them, power bricks. I don't know what they call those. Right, Which, right. those are ballasts. Yeah, they're ballasts. Okay. Right, that's for the radions. So now, do they generate and heat that kind of comes up through there that you notice at all? Or? It's not that hot. It's electronic ballast. It's not putting okay, out so that much not, heat. No. Okay. No. And nor does the vector pump also doesn't produce yeah. a lot of heat. And that's the kind of pump you got, vector pump. Yeah, I put the vector pump in here. Right. Yeah. And now the vector is the DC model, so you can control that. And yeah, and you, don't only, you rarely have to run it even above half speed. No, it's, it's actually okay, running it's really lower efficient. than half speed. Okay. Partly because the system won't handle a lot of speed. Got it. Which is fine because I don't see the point of running a lot of water through the sump anyway. Uh, so I'm not running. Sure. Even at high levels in my big tanks. So right. this is fine. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I have it dialed down. It's barely drawing any power. That you know, it's running at like 20, 30 percent, I think, right now. Right. Yeah, I'm, tur I'm turning yeah. over like two or three times per hour. Is that about what you're doing? I haven't really bothered. Yeah. You know. You're an engineer. Numbers are your life. <laughs> yeah. I know. But. Hey, it works, and I don't right. mess with it. Well, you haven't put anything in it yet. Well, you know, I don't know. Well, to, to that point, tell everybody why slow is better than fast. Slow, it gives everything that you have in your sump, your skimmer, your chemicals, your adsorbers of uh, phosphate, your carbons, whatever, a longer time to react with the water. If you're pushing it through real quickly, you're not getting a time to react. Even the calerpa doesn't really have time to take nutrients out if it's just shooting through. So you, you typically want... I run, uh, some of the Europeans only run one or two times. I run two to three times. 
but I don't really run a whole lot. But then in the upper tank, I'm moving water right. at roughly 10 times the, the volume of the tank. So you want a lot of motion in the tank, but you don't want it all to be from the return pump. Plus it's more energy efficient. Why waste all that sure. power of pumping yeah, so, much, pumping up so much water <laughs> and then cross. have it come down and pump it all the way back up? Right, right. So I don't see the point of wasting that much power either. Right. Yeah, and if, you're, if you have a fish room below your tank, like a floor, mm -hmm. I would only do it once an hour because that's really going to save you a lot of energy and not dump as much heat into the water. The more times you run it through, the more heat because none of those pumps are totally cool and not add water. They all cool themselves by water. So the more often you run it through, the more heat you generate. Sure. And that's still one of the biggest problems we have is heat generation, particularly in the summertime. Yeah, so an interesting put on this one, right? No chiller or anything like that. No, no, I'm, I'm done with chillers. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't wipe I am done with chillers. <laughs> right. One wipeout was all I could take. Right, right. So there will never be a chiller in any of my systems anymore. We don't need them anymore. Right. You know. I was gonna say, and when we talk, uh, when we go to the big system, we can talk about the details of that a little right. bit, right? You know, how yes. you, what you're doing there. And okay, so then, as far as this tank goes, you're gonna add fish in the August time frame, or uh, as right. far as kind of the coral. Yeah, I have a stock of corals that are, I mean, in holding. Okay. That yeah, have been collecting. That have been collecting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he uh, said he wasn't gonna bring up any corals. He brought up as many as me, so you he know, got, I, the, got the fever. I asked Mike. I said, "So tell me the best part of Reef of Palooza for you." He goes, "Getting Sanjay right to buy those corals, <laughs> right? I bring up corals and be as excited right. about them as I am." Exactly. But man, I don't need to add any more corals. It's he, an addiction. It yeah. is. Uh, yeah. You know, and Mike is not a good companion. No, 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 no. no, no I'm a contagious all. element to this. Exactly. Yeah. Come on, Sanjay. You need this yeah. one too. <laughs> It'll glow in the dark, even yeah. on it without the blue lights. <laughs> so no, now, okay. no, look what I got. You should get this one too. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. No, but then what's that way if mine dies, that way if mine dies, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I know where to get it from. Exactly. It's an alternative. No, we paid for it. We do. Right. We trade right. corals all the time. And what's funny is they look so different in our tanks. They right? do. I want this coral. You gave me that coral. Right. <laughs> right. I've been doing that to him for the last 15 right. years. Uh, it's funny. Or more, or more. Always, uh, 20 years. Yeah. But they all look different in you know, each of our tanks. I mean, nice, but different. Right, right, right. Exactly. That's why when people say, well, this is the you know flaming rainbow. We both have it. It looks different it in both of our tanks. Uh, it's different in the third guy's tank, right. too. So, we, I mean, we always laugh about these people naming corals and charging ridiculous <laughs> amounts because when they grow out, they don't look like That's anything right. we've seen. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, rarely do we sit here like this looking at that <laughs> red polyp on it. We don't do that. You're sitting six feet away going, look at that green coral. <laughs> Okay, so which corals did you actually bring back? You said you got them in waves. Actually, I brought up back more bentiparas than I brought back the acros because I was thinking about this sure, tank. Sure, sure. And populating this tank. Sure. So I was on a montipara collection spree. Yeah, unfortunately, in Palooza, they had yeah, more yeah, montiparas uh, than, than anything else. Yeah, Worldwide Corals had a really nice selection, and I ended up with a bunch from them. Okay, so what's the, yeah. what's the one that you're like, man, I really hope that this just... Or can't wait to. He doesn't know the names. No, <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah, I, I get it. Right. Two years. There was the there was a start. He had a starburst Monty mm -hmm. that had both red and green in it. Okay. That kind of is yes. kind of different and neat. It's yes. going to be a really neat coral. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited about that one. The others are a lot of them were been around in the hobby for a while. Sure. And you know I'm happy with even green Mont Montys in here. Sure, sure. I'm willing to go with some of the old school Montes that don't exist in people's tanks anymore now. Yeah. But, you know, uh, yeah, but the one you've been looking for is the Forest Fire Digitata with the green body. This is bodies. the one. This is the one. That's a Forest Fire. It is. It is. It doesn't have a green body. It will. It'll get a green body eventually. <laughs> well, you got to put the blue worry. lights to get the green body. No, no, Otherwise no, it looks no, like no, a pink no, Digitata. No, 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 no. It looks once like you, a pink Digitata. Once I get the nutrient levels up, it'll uh, turn okay. green. It'll turn green. Now, whatever you, whatever you shoot, <laughs> fine. That, shoot that one. Right. I'm taking a picture of that. That's just right. so I can say two years ago. That is the Forest Fire Digitata or whatever you guys want to right. call it. Uh, well, see, that's what's perfect, right? Because we got it on video. We'll have it on video. Oh, and then, yeah. It'll and then, last forever. And, right. Which is, said it was a forest fire. <laughs> that's that's right. a pink oh, he's going to come back and say, your forest fire looks so much nicer right, than mine. Right, right, right. No, mine you got a piece of that? Mine is a deep green right now with, <laughs> yes. with orange polyps, so I'm, I'm happy with mine. But it's only, I mean, it's much smaller frag. So we will see. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you know, that's a good place to actually cut it, meaning 
we'll, you know, again, we'll kind of do maybe if we can six month or a year update. We'll come back. We'll see how that. I'll be here in two months. My daughter goes to Penn State. I'm here right. every month seeing Sanjay because yeah, she always needs food and taking out the dinner. I am always the holdup. We know that. Yeah. So, so good deal. Okay, again, again, uh, any parting words for this thing, Sanjay? I don't know, I'm just looking forward to it. I mean, yeah. this is kind of getting excited again. It's always fun to set up a new tank. I kind yeah. of enjoy that whole yeah. setting up. Yes. And my other tank has been running for more than 10 years now. And right. It's gone through ups and downs, but it's not the same as setting up with a new tank. Yeah, because it's still on, it's a kind of an autopilot, right? It's and mostly an autopilot, yeah. yeah. Right, and now yeah. how many more things can you add, per se? Or? Yeah, there's not a whole lot. A tweak here and there, right. you know, which is kind of fine with me. When I'm traveling and doing all that, sure. I'm not interested in doing a lot of right. that. Right, right. But, we'll see but how the whole excitement of setting up a new tank, there's something about it. Yeah. But it'll, it'll be, it'll be there's interesting something about it. to see how the traveling takes a toll on the new tank versus the one that's already been up and running kind of thing. Yeah, because right now this he's, one doesn't he's, even he's have had a... the toll taken on the old tank. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's no controller even on here. There's nothing on here. I'm trying to keep it as low tech as possible. Are you going to get a camera before, once it's set up so you can watch it, so you can check yeah, on it? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the camera. I just, just make sure that all my corals are shared with my friends. That right. way, if anything yeah, goes yeah. wrong, I can always get them back. Yeah. Yes. And my tippers yeah. potentially grow much faster than just about anything else when they're right. happy. So that's what's going to be interesting. And this is not going to have that many corals in here. It's not that big a tank. Right. And I've purposely, you know, sparsely populated with rock. Well, particularly mm -hmm. since you have 40... And Perhaps yeah, exactly. I, you know, this was another thing. This we wanted to make a mound of encrusting money. Okay. Just you know, even if it was one color, it right. was fine. But be a whole mound of it. You know, so make a nice roundish thing. So I took one of my. You should have put that grafted cap and broke that into there. Well, the grafted nice. cap is too small right now. It's well, the other one, like no, the other one's. Like, but the caps big. are going on this side. Oh, okay. So you know, there, there's some method to this madness. There it there. is. You know, okay, so hey, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, what's the method of the madness? Okay, you said caps are going there. I should show you the sketch. I don't have that picture with me right now. Okay. But uh, a good friend of mine, Tony Plasters, mm -hmm. he's more into aquascaping. He's more artistic than I am. So he always helps me out right. with some of the layouts. And he sent me the sketch of, oh, this is how I kind of you should envision it looking. And he had this big boulder of money and then mm -hmm. the sticks behind it and mm -hmm. plates here and sticks here. Mm -hmm. And he even had labeled them up with what monies would look good where. Mm -hmm. So I gave him the full creative <laughs> okay. powers on this tank. Got it. <laughs> I said, all right, you know, we'll make a deal. You have creative control. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so let's see what we do. <laughs> so he's trying to make a boulder here. Okay. Right. Of course, you know, I don't have any round pieces. Right. So we actually took a whole bunch of rock and then we put cement on it. So this is the Marco cement mm -hmm. that Marco Rock sells for gluing his tank. Yes, yes. So that's what we used. And we kind of smoothed it out mm -hmm. because I didn't want, I want it to look like a bo nice boulder. Right. And if you stick the rocks together, then you get valleys in there and the money might not grow right over it. Right. So that's what we did. And we just took one little chunk of my huge money, mm -hmm. <laughs> took pieces and stuck them on here. To accelerate the growth, so right. it's not growing from one little frag, right. and it'll quickly cover up that rock. And then there'll be some money sticking out from the back, and some sticks here, and some plating monies here. And so the idea is it going to be like high to low in the back? Yeah, the back will be higher, and the front will be lower. And so you're encrusting things. Sticks are, in the back, and yeah, encrusting the, on the front. Some sticks sticking out. Looking for the caps to sort of spread around each other. With yeah, the sticks right, in the so middle. I've got now oh, the nice star. I've there. got the starburst, the grafted cap. I've got the regular grafted cap. Mm -hmm. I've got the green cap. I've got the purple cap. I've got the orange cap. Mm -hmm. So I'll just make a little cap jungle there. Sure. And, well, I'm gonna, I'll yeah, send, I'm gonna send you a couple pictures though. There's some really nice cap inner mixed together. I like that. They're really. Yeah. Uh, yeah so that's what it'll be. Low enough, you can look from the you top. can look from the top. It'll yeah. be really right. impressive. So that's what I'll do there. I've got a collection of caps for that. And that's where I think Collection this, this of tank will, will be perfect yeah. a year from now, because yeah. I know how fast he grows things. Right. So a year from now, it'll be nice to look at this to see how much his patience paid off and to see how well a tank can look in just a year. I know that sounds like a long time for people that are starting off with a new tank, but a year in this hobby is like, right. it's gone in the blink yeah. of an eye. Right. So this will be nice because next July, I know I'll be back here because I'll be taking my daughter back to school in August. So approximately a year from now, we'll 
judge how well this is done. If you've killed it this Sunday, we won't ever show anyone. <laughs> no, I won't kill it. I, I won't kill it. The fear is my butterfly fish might eat all my money. Sure. <laughs> so we, in this slice tag, we can catch them out. <laughs> yeah, we can catch them out. Thank you, guys. All right. All right.